like Donna said, my name is Marissa Laws. I'm a physical therapist. Um, and I joined the National AMBUX team last July. And I'm the director of Amtrak Training and Research. So one of my biggest goals and biggest projects is our Amtrak Evaluation and Fitting for Therapist program. So this is going to be um, fairly informal. Like Donna said, pop questions in the chat or feel free to raise your hand. Um, I will say a lot of the slides, I might answer your question in the next slide. So just try and be patient. Um, and I'll also have all of my information listed. Um, Adam can help me send that out to you all at the end if you need to get in touch with me following this chapter chat. Um, but we'll go ahead and dive in. So first, we're just going to kind of go over what is AEFT. So for the remainder of the chat, I'm going to call this AEFT because Amtrak Evaluation and Fitting for Therapists is a little bit of a mouthful, but it is a continuing education course that was created in 2018 by several AMBUX member therapists. And the goal of this was to improve the safety of Amtrak's and ensure appropriate fit. There was a need found that a lot of people weren't super familiar with um, how to fit for the trikes, and we wanted to make sure that people were ordering the right trike for the right rider the first time. So this kind of gives a lot of good background knowledge for therapists that are going to be evaluating and fitting. It qualifies for continuing education credits in several states for those licensed therapists. So physical therapist, occupational therapist, and recreational therapist require um, continuing education units to keep their licensure. Um, OTs, PTs, RTs, and then all the assistants also require those continuing education units. So by attending our course, they can kind of help keep their licensure up to date, which is really nice. We added recently recreational therapists to the list of therapists that could be taking this course. Um, the only caveat was that they needed to be in a state that does require licensure. So this course is a one day course. We do have the ability for it to be a two day course with a trike building portion in the appropriate scenario um, with trikes on hand, having riders set up, et cetera. And there is a didactic or a lecture portion of that course, which takes up most of the morning from 8 until about 1130. And then there's a hands-on learning led by a trained instructor for most of the afternoon where we have demo riders come in. They're riders from that community that need to be fitted or have received an Amtrak previously and are gracious enough to volunteer their time so other therapists can learn. The OTs, PTs, and RTs can benefit from all aspects of this course because they are trained in evaluations as part of their curriculum and licensure. But PTs, CODAs, or Certified Occupational Therapy Assistants, and Rec Therapy Assistants are only supposed to be doing fittings. They're not taught in school the evaluation component, so they are only to be doing fittings and require a co-signature by a PT, OT, or RT. So that's just a little bit of background on what AEFT is. So now let's talk about who teaches these courses. So we have eight dedicated PTs and OTs who have been thoroughly trained and educated on Amtrikes. All of these really great therapists are members of chapters and have been working for a very long time giving trikes away and kind of bleed our AMBUX mission of inspiring mobility and independence. So I went ahead and broke it down by region. So in Southern region, you have myself and Ashley Schilling, who are AEFT instructors. In the Northeast region, we have Christy Thompson and Marie McLeod. In mid-states, we don't have anybody yet, but we're hoping that the training at national conference will help us to kind of make sure that we have representation in each region for trainers. In central region, we have Cassidy Sanchez. Southwest region, we again, don't have a, a trained instructor there yet. In Great Plains, we have Christina Bouley. In the western region, we have Emmy Yukua and Denise Nettiberg. And um, I'll be talking a little bit more on that upcoming training in a few 
other slides. So this is a very simplified slide because it's a process and we've went through a lot of changes and really broken this process down with help from the Amtrak Advisory Board and the National Board and myself um, going through it. But basically, a lot of people are like, well, how do we get an AEFT? Well, the first way that you're going to get one is you got to request one. So there is a request document on the website that you can go to therapist, go down to Amtrak Evaluation and Fitting, and then there will be a little box that says um, helpful documents, and you'll go down to the bottom and you'll click that request form. You're able to complete that form, and it has that you'll return that form to me via email. Once that application has been approved, you'll put three different dates for when you potentially want to host that course on that application. I'll approve your dates. I'll assign an instructor, whether that's myself or one of the seven other therapists. And then you'll sign a course commitment contract. That contract just says, we're going to make this a fun learning environment that's safe and suitable for learning. We're agreeing to pay the associated fees make sure that we have the appropriate trikes and the appropriate assistance um, to make this go smoothly. I will walk you through step-by-step step with getting your venue ready, with getting your lab participants ready, everything that you need to do, I'm right there with you. And I have um, little time frame emails that I like to send out every so often so that you're getting a reminder of where you should be at in your preparation for hosting. We do require a minimum of 10 therapists to attend the course. And that's because we are taking um, a whole day of one of our volunteer therapist time to come and spend it teaching. We need to make sure that we're utilizing our efforts the best we can. So that's um, a number that we all agreed upon. And then the really cool thing is once you get those therapists trained and they're in your area, they're gonna be able to help you to get more riders in the community going, which is the whole point of why we're doing this, right? So this is the website. Um, I think you can all see my cursor. I'm not going to click on it right yet because to be honest, I don't want it to do something funky while I'm sharing my screen. <laughs> um, so when you go to ambox.org, you're going to be able to click therapist up here at the top and then click Amtrak evaluation and fitting for therapist. On this page, you're going to be able to see this course description, which I've went over with you a little bit, our course schedule. So it'll show you all of our upcoming trainings. So currently we have Savannah or Tybee Island, which is next Friday, March 22nd, which is crazy that it's coming that soon. Um, we have a therapist or another course in Danville, Illinois on April 13th. And then we have one more currently scheduled for April 27th at the Great Plains Regional Conference. Those are all listed on the website here and they all have the registration links for them listed here as well. You can also see that request document button right there. You can see the, bibli uh, the little bibliographies or biographies of all the instructors. So you can kind of put a face to a name, see what they do in their chapter and kind of what their background is. And then there's other helpful resources at the bottom of this page too, once you click that button. Okay, so I am gonna click these. We're gonna cross our fingers. So this first one is our logistics document. We're gonna see what it does. Okay, good, good. All right, so I know this looks um, kind of funky. I'm just gonna scroll through it. You don't need to be reading every part of this. But this is our logistics document for potential host, group, host groups. So you all are members of Ambux, you're associated with chapters, but those who aren't members can also host a course. Um, they are just encouraged to become members and to become a chapter. So we are currently offering AEFT on a biennial schedule per region, meaning that each region is able to utilize um, a chunk of money from the ARC to host a course every two years. So this year, Savannah 
um, when we are hosting that one um, next week will be the Southern Regional course. Great Plains is in April. And those are the only regional courses um, other than Western Region used there last year. Um, so that race started as of August 2023 when we redid this. I'm going to go over a few of the costs really quick. So if this is one of those biennial scheduled trainings, then we waive the speaker fee and the mechanic fee. So the speaker fee is $300. That's just to help accommodate that person that's coming in um, and taking a day to spend teaching therapist. It's also required that you provide accommodations and travel for the instructor if you're hosting that course. Now that might be gas money if they're driving, if they're close by, that might be airfare. Then that's a hotel or a place to stay. Then a lot of you all are able and have access to places where you can host the course, whether that's a church fellowship hall, a clinic that's a part of your membership group, et cetera. And then um, you might need tables or projector equipment, things like that. So equipment rental is in there. Most of our chapters don't need that, but you might. We also require a box lunch for all attendees for the day of the course. So that is something that you do have to pay. If it is in that biennial schedule, that's reimbursed by the ARC. And then there's also a $200 mechanic fee if that mechanic is not local. So if they're having to travel in, we're going to have you pay that fee. We also have to have trikes there. We can't teach the course without trikes. So if there's a need to utilize a trailer or a neighboring chapter's trikes and they need to get there, then you need to help compensate that chapter for doing so. If they don't care and they're like, no, no, it's fine, whatever, y'all can hash those details out. But our, um, our boundary that we're gonna set or guideline is that you should reimburse gas and mileage, reimburse that. And then if you are asking for there to be a CEU application for your state and there's a fee associated with that, you will also be asked to pay that. Several states um, are able to use approval from other states, so we don't always have to apply for a new one. So just make sure that you ask me if your state's already been approved or not um, so that we can know if we need to add that in or not. This just also, this document is literally your manual for everything AEFT. So it's got this request process in it, shows you how to do that, tells you what kind of space you need, um, equipment, which we've kind of already went over, the food and refreshments, and let's talk about volunteer personnel. So when you're hosting an AEFT, you're going to have one host group point person. And that is the person that I am going to communicate with, um, whether I am the one coming to instruct your course or I am just acting as the director of Amtrak Training and Research. I need someone that's local to your area that I'm going to be able to check off all of those pre-course things with, making sure that we have the directions for how we need to get there, for attendees, that lunches have been ordered, et cetera. So we need one post point, point person. We also need a course assistant. That could be somebody that's volunteering from your chapter, not attending the course, but just kind of helps make sure people come in, they don't get lost. Um, but they can also be somebody that's attending the course. We also have a lab facilitator. If you have had a course in the past or you have a therapist that's already trained, a lot of times we'll have those therapists come in and just help the instructor um, during lab time, especially in the afternoon. So for example, when Ashley Schilling taught in North Carolina in November, I was her lab facilitator. So I helped and just made sure that we were both able to go around and answer questions as they came up from the attendees. And then if there's more than 30, per, 30 people, we have to have another um, assistant as well. And I'm gonna keep scrolling. Like I said, we're going to have live demos. So we like to have four to six demos based on class size of who's going to come in and pretend to be a rider that's getting fitted and evaluated for their Amtrike. 
some of those people might have already went through that process and they're just coming back to help train the, the next round of therapists. Or they could be brand new and you're actually coordinating a giveaway at the same time as this course. We've had some um, circumstances where that works out really well. And I will help you to coordinate those. This trike build option um, it is a little tricky to situate, but we can do it if we need to. So this then makes the course a two day course. The trike build would be the day prior. And then the lecture with the typical AEFT curriculum would be the following day. And that would be in the circumstance where you have riders coming in for that lab portion that are actually going to be taking their trikes home that day. So you would have um, the trikes in a box ready to be built. Therapists would learn how to build the trikes that day and Amtrike mechanics can also come to attend that portion. And then they do not have to attend to come to the AEFT. It's an optional piece, but it's another way to kind of get other people involved in your chapter that might not be therapist. All right, we're gonna keep scrolling down. So everybody wants to know about cost. So the course cost $115 per attendee. So if Joe Schmo off the street that's not an AMBUX member wants to come and take it, he's gonna pay $115. If he's an AMBUX member and a member of a chapter, he's gonna get a discount and his registration would then be $75. If he's a student of a therapy program, OTPT or rec therapy, his um, cost would be $25. We need to add that in here. But we want to encourage this new generation of therapists to be involved in Amtrak very early. So that's why we're doing that student discount. And then um, there is a non-refundable administration fee of $40 from those two um, member and full registration cost. So they can get refunded up to a week prior, but the $40 is non-refundable. Another big thing that I get asked is what's the benefit of hosting an AEFT? Well, first and foremost, if you have people who are not chapter members, they're paying a full registration price. $75 of each of those people is going to go into your chapter's Amtrak wishlist fund because we are only taking $40 for administrative cost the rest of it's going into your wish list. So that's helping you buy trikes for riders on your list. The other thing is it's helping to develop and strengthen those relationships between chapters and community therapists. We all know that sometimes that's the hardest part is just finding therapists in the community and figuring out how to get them involved. And this is a really great way to kind of bridge that gap. The other part is having an increased number of therapists within your chapter that are qualified and confident and doing the evaluation and fitting. Because when it's just one person doing it all the time, it they can either burn out or they also are just volunteers, right? They have other commitments they might need to be doing. So if we have more people, then we're able to spread our mission a little bit further. And then you can also recruit new members. The last part on this logistics document is just the proposed course schedule. This is typically pretty um, structured and how we follow, um, but it's a, from an eight o'clock time in the morning and it goes to a minimum of 3.30, depending on how many therapists are signed up for the course and um, how complex those demo riders are, we might extend to 5 p.m. So I usually just try and tell host groups, hey, just plan on 5 p.m. Worst case scenario, people get out early and it's not a big deal. So that is the logistics document. Now I've got to find my PowerPoint again. Just give me a second for that. Oh, found it. Okay. We're going to click through the request form really quick. This one's a lot easier. <laughs> so you just basically put your chapter's name as your host group. You give three date options, list them in the preference that you would like your location of the requested course. So if you have a venue you know lined up, let's put that there and put the city state and then put your funding source, whether that is biennial regional training or if that is we as the AMBUX chapter are hosting and agree to pay for that amount. If it's a biennial training, we need that letter of support from your regional director. 
that just shows that you've communicated with them and this is an appropriate um, place to have this regional course. If it was, you know, in Alaska, um, that might not be the best place to do the Western region course. So we just wanna make sure that um, it's gonna support the region as a whole. And then lastly, I'll go over it. Why not? We're already here. This is the frequently asked question um, document. And it's also attached, but basically it breaks down everything that I've just talked about um, in a little bit more condensed version, which I personally like. Um, so hopefully you all will find this easier to read as well. And um, yeah, it's also linked to the other documents. The last part I'm gonna go over, which wasn't in here, is our mechanics criteria. Let's see if it, cool, it did not work. I won't email that you, out to you all, but we do have a criteria for mechanics that are coming to assist in the course. So Dan Kite's on this call here. Um, he's gonna be my mechanic at Great Plains Regional Conference. Um, and we basically have a long list of different tools that we want that mechanic to feel confident and competent using. We also want them to just have a general knowledge of Amtrak, the different accessories and such. Because if I'm the instructor and I'm in the middle of a demo and I have 15 attendees around me that are asking questions and and we're going over things. I want someone to be able to help me with a second set of hands and changing out a back or tightening a brake or adjusting a seat post so that we can keep this really fluid. Okay. So we just ran through that pretty quickly. I hope it felt as quickly um, as it kind of seemed, but um, I am happy to open up the floor now to questions. I know that um, a lot of this information can be um, really daunting um, and it's a lot of information to take in. So if you have questions, if you wanna unmute and go ahead and ask, if there's a bunch of people that do it at once, I'm probably just gonna say whoever I heard first. Or if no one has questions, we'll have a very short chapter chat for the evening. I was just going to add, if you don't feel comfortable <laughs> saying your question, you can put it in the chat and I'll help that, Marissa so. keep a, an eye on that. Yes, that is easier for some people. Renee. Could you um, repeat the part about the evaluations versus the fittings? I guess I wasn't aware of that in the past and want to make sure I got it right. Yes. So we have, and some of this we're trying to just be a little bit more consistent with since we've redone the logistics document since I came on board um, in July. So we would prefer uh, um, and I don't want to say required because we know it doesn't always happen that way. Um, but if it's an evaluation, so it's an assessment, we're filling out the paperwork on that request form. We're checking out that um, potential Amtrak rider for a PT or an OT or an RT that are licensed to at least co-sign that document. The PTA, OTA, RTA can do it, but we need a co-signature. And that's just because there's certain pieces. Um, we all know in clinical practice, they get bits and pieces of that. But in standard education, that evaluatory, evaluatory content is not taught to assistants. So we just wanna make sure that we are um, taking all of that into consideration. Okay, thank you for clarifying. Yeah. Okay, there's something in, okay. Kathleen, so you asked, what are the requirements to be an AEFT instructor? So we are um, hopefully going to be doing that AEFT instructor training at national conference. That's the plan. The board has approved that to be in the program. And the um, requirements for that are that we want you to have 25 to 30 
evaluation and biddings under your belt with Amtrak. Um, you have to be an Ambux member. So you also have to hold an active license in um, whatever state you're practicing in. And then you also have to have some public speaking experience because you're going to be teaching in front of 10 to 30 people at a time. Um, so those are the biggest pieces. And um, if you have any other questions, those are our basic requirements right now. I was just going to add the, the national conference dates. We'd love to see all of you in Tulsa, Oklahoma this year. They are yep. July 31st through August 3rd. That training would be on Friday, August 2nd. So even if you can only do a weekend registration this year, you'd still be able to get there in time for the education sessions. And that training is only going to be two hours. This is not a full AEFT. Um, Kathleen, I left that part out. You also have to have attended AEFT prior. So you can't just go in to be a trainer and never have attended AEFT because we'd be jumping the gun on content. Trying to keep an eye on the chat. Any other questions? Did that requirement change a little bit? Was it more before than the 25 to 30 fittings? It was. Um, we had ideally wanted closer to 50. Um, that would still be really great, but we also want to make sure that we're getting um, regional coverage because there's only eight of us. So we're trying to not um, dilute the quality of our trainers, but we also want to make sure that we're able to get more therapists in the community trained. And I'm assuming is that 25 to 30 after like taking the AEFT? Yes. Okay. Yeah. We can probably, you know, discuss some of that stuff a little bit more, but that's typically the, the order in which we would have it. Okay. Any other questions? I don't see anything in the chat. So feel free to do that if you need to. I mean, I'll, I'll, this is Jessica. I'll go ahead and throw this out there. I get asked a lot. What if we don't have the money mm -hmm. to cover a course? I mean, sh so they should reach out to you anyway, correct? <laughs> yes, <laughs> do reach out to me. Um, so we do have a grant from the Amtrak Advisory Board. This grant covers the speaker fee and the mechanics fee, so it's saving you $500. Um, generally speaking, it's about $800 to host an AEFT course. That's, you know, ballpark with food, trailer, mileage, stuff like that, um, but that covers your speaker fee, your mechanics fee, and then gives you $300 that you're playing with, right? you're going to be bringing some money in that you can either say you can use parts of that wish list money to go towards that if you really needed to. Um, or we have that Amtrak Advisory Board grant that there is an application process. So if you want to apply to that, you're more than welcome. The Amtrak Advisory Board will vote on those quarterly. And that money might change year to year, just depending on how much money they have um, to support AEFT. But we're trying to at least support two grants per year. It's a quiet group tonight. They're taking know, it all. Right? They're they're taking it all in. I know. <laughs> it's a lot to process. It is. But you've certainly created some very helpful documentation on the website. Um, you've, I know that you've made some other uh, visual picture graphics. Maybe if they need to pitch it to their groups, they can use some of these resources. It's certainly yes. a conversation where the whole chapter has to be on board. Right. Um, I don't think... Donna uh, or Diane Carlton would mind me saying this, but they're hosting in Danville. Um, they are 
helping to pay for their therapists that are associated with their chapter to attend because they know that in the long run, that's an investment in their chapter. Um, so, you know, people need the money or need the continuing education units to keep their licensure. So it's kind of a win-win for us therapists. It's a very inexpensive course for the number of continuing education units you get, um, which most states are getting six of those. Um, most states require anywhere from 22 to 35 units every other year. Um, so that's a good chunk of what you need um, spending a day learning about Amtrak's. Like we Gordon got another question. Yep. Yeah, I was oh, gonna say okay. Gordon wants to know what are some other ways to encourage attendance besides social media and emails, also calling PT offices. Yeah, Gordon, I know we're on the struggle bus. Um, so I think that the biggest thing is when people are sending in their request through your chapter to get Amtrak's. Um, it's being like, hey, we have a course for this. You can benefit with continuing education credits. And you're also going to feel more confident and knowledgeable about doing this evaluation next time. Um, that's a really good way to do it. Um, I would say social media, um, calling PT offices, giving the flyer to previous recipients or just asking them to share because they're within therapy communities, most likely. So it might just be, I know a lot of our recipients, it's word of mouth that we get people, right? Um, they're like, oh my gosh, Sally got this Amtrak. Now I want one for my son, Sam. And, you know, the same way we do that, we can also kind of promote more therapist attendance that way. And I think schools, PT programs, OT programs, rec therapy programs, those are also a huge way if you have someone that's involved in academia within your chapter, so they either teach or volunteer with a, a program, or you have students, spread the word that way. We're having a large amount of students that are more and more interested in getting started in this now than waiting until after they graduate. I think your um, comment about looking at who, what therapists are requesting Amtrak's is probably going to be your easiest audience sure. because they always already have a foot in the door they know what it's about i know um my chapter is offered to pay the cost of up to three therapists to go to the training and none of them have yeah. in my town because it's two hours away and one of them told me well i already have my continued education units in and you know two hour drive all day i guess they they don't see the buy-in you um, throw in free free lunch for those students and they're like, I'm there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um Jean, uh -huh. um, Jean Sargent asks, yeah, and I I'm see. sure that I know the answer is yes. She wants to know um, if a therapist can yeah. attend another region. And yes, the only 100%. problem would be licensing, maybe, Marissa, right? For the season. Yeah. So um, like for example, when I teach next week in Georgia, any of the southern region like areas, we already have approval for South Carolina, North Carolina, Tennessee, Georgia. Um, I don't know if we have Alabama, I'll check that one. Um, but a lot of times we already have approval in other states. Um, when I teach in Illinois in a few weeks, we already have Indiana as well. So if there's a specific state that you're not really sure if we have approval for yet, just let me know and I can make sure but um, typically it doesn't matter if they take it in a different state, as long as they just show um, that they attended the course with their certificate. And then Gordon said, we have an occupational therapy association coming to conference as a vendor. Nice. Um, I think that's a big group that sometimes we leave out. Um, so I would love for more OTs, OT schools, um, they can benefit just as much as anybody else and are really great at taking into some considerations us PTs forget a lot of times. I like Gordon's train of thought there, though. Jean, she's the region director for Southern Region, and we might want to look at that relationship between Texas and Oklahoma to see. For sure. Yeah. I will say Texas is one of the harder states for us to get um, continuing education approval for but we can do it. We will figure out a way to do it. 
I think um, Ashley may, Ashley Schilling may have gotten it approved in the past, um, but California, we got approval for, and that's bar none, one of the hardest states. So we'll get it. Is that what you were going to ask, Renee? <laughs> okay. <laughs> no, I, I figured that you did have it because you had one here, um, but I know it's hard to get them approved. It is. That's why Emmy and Denise did the trike build in conjunction because that helped get their approval. They also got, I want to say they got 12 hours. No, they got 10 hours approved versus six by adding that trike build into the course. So that was Excellent. really great. If I may know, um, Diane Carlton's my sister, so I'm yes. well versed in uh, what what's going on in the Danville uh, preparation for this, and they're very excited. Um, Danville is a big chapter, and it's an old old chapter, and we the their board decided to do this as a scholarship uh, situation for therapists in the area, uh, and it's it's proving to be quite successful. I personally got a hold of a couple of the younger ones that my kids, my grandkids actually know. And they're like, oh, uh, hours for free? We'll be there, you know, like tell us when and where and we'll be there. So it's pretty exciting. I think it's going along really well. But um, having some of those scholarships available, um, you know, from the national, that's going to be priceless. Yeah, so thank you all for doing that. For sure. Anybody else have any questions? Anybody else chomping at the bit to get an AEFT in their area? Lisa, are you asking a question? Oh, I was just going to say um, Texas was approved for CEUs. Wonderful. Perfect. When Sue taught it. Um, a while ago but we did okay. we can do it so we have to redo it every year or two depending on the state but if it's been approved once um yeah and usually like with us increasing you know reference lists things like that it usually isn't as hard to get it approved the second go round, mm -hmm. which is really nice yeah it would be good yeah we are working on getting one in the texas tech area Yes, Love it. So with, we're still working on that. Yeah. Yeah. I spoke with Katie Harco about that. So that would be a really awesome one down there in Texas. And then there will be one date to be determined in October in La Crosse, Wisconsin. Um, Cassie Sanchez will be teaching that one. Does have a. They should, Gordon. So it, it just goes based on the course having approval. So if the course has approval in Texas, it doesn't matter if they take the course in Oklahoma. It just has to have Texas approval. Um, so, yeah. But then, like, South Carolina doesn't require approval. There's some states that don't care. <laughs> <laughs> and they're just like, you went and took a CEU course, show us your certificate that you did it, and we'll give you credit for it. And then there's others that are a little bit more strict. So if we want to recommend sending people to the Oklahoma training, the AFT, then do we need to get that approval first before we? Yeah, I can start that working way? on that okay. tomorrow. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yep. Just because we're a little under two months for that. Yep. Um, but I can start working on that tomorrow. I can reach out to the Texas board. Um, most occupational therapy just require the licensee to check and make sure that they follow the appropriate guidelines. Um, I haven't had any OT boards that specifically wanted a um, application for approval, um, but I can start working on that Texas one tomorrow. Oklahoma was, um, Oklahoma was, was a little tedious, so we'll Hopefully it's similar and we don't have to repeat a bunch of stuff. I have a quiet group tonight. I think that says a lot about that you covered everything, Marissa. Good job. 
I hope so. There's all the documents if I didn't. Um, if you need my email, I can put that in the chat so everybody can see it because frequently my name gets extra letters. Yeah, I because think Donna, I spell it uniquely. I think Jessica put it in there if they scroll up to 705. She already put your phone number it's, too. It's so. all the way at the top. And we had a lot of great questions. So it's a little buried. Yeah. Nice. I have the easiest extension in the office, one, two, three. So <laughs> you need me, I'm there. <laughs> I think <laughs> well, that's good. I, yeah. Until they're like, oh, I thought I was calling Jake or, oh, I thought I was calling Adam. Like, nope, you got a little on me. I'm sorry. Or, hey, is it Jay Lawrence there? And I'm like, no. <laughs> <laughs> but there's no more questions about the AEFT. We still have a few minutes left. If you guys have any other burning questions about AMBUX or any other AMBUX program, you have a good audience right here that can help you. Lisa, are you talking or is that just background? Oh, I'm sorry. Background. No, you're you're good. Just didn't want you to be having a question we couldn't hear. <laughs> is Renee's hand up again or is it still up? Yeah. No, I put it up. Go again. ahead, Renee. Um I since I have a group think here, um, we have a, a an evaluation day and delivery day set up in a in about a month. And one of the clients we have coming is going to be using or being evaluated for a hand trike and we don't have one as a demo for her the closest one is a couple hours away from where they live um, and so okay. i just wondered if there was any insights that you have about sharing with this client specifics about the hand trikes she is a, a late teen i believe 16 to 18 year old young woman with spina bifida do you have access to an AM? No, we like don't. a larger AM. Okay. No. Well, um, I feel like we, most of our riders with spina bifida do pretty well with hand cycles, generally speaking, because they're usually, I don't want to stereotype, they usually are using their manual wheelchairs and being really independent with that. Mm -hmm. Um, I would say our hand cycles have that typical wheelchair seat. So, and she can, if she is using a manual wheelchair, she can always switch her cushion out and put that on the hand cycle. Um, the preference would be, um, so they typically come paired, but for some reason, some people like it reciprocal. Okay. I think it's a little bit more laborious to do it that way. Um, and is that the AM20 then, that you're talking about or is that? No, the so recumbent? the only full hand cycles that we have right now are the 1020 and the 1024. Okay. Or the yeah. AM16 converted with a foot platform. I think um, that AM20 is what we were looking at because I thought the 24s might still be out of stock. So we uh, don't, the, yeah, the AM20 is not, it's discontinued. So we have the, oh, the okay. 1020. Which oh, is maybe the, that's that's what I'm thinking of. I'm okay, sorry. yeah, ten twenty. So that's the junior hand cycle. Depending on her size, that would probably be appropriate. Um, and Jess, I think that one is still in stock. It is. It okay. is. One other thing that I was going to mention, Renee, is we do have a little bit of the help for hand cycles grant still available, and that, like the name says, is to help chapters fund hand trikes, specifically the ten twenty ten twenty four. Um, I mean, I, I know you don't want to preemptively buy one and she not be able to use it, but if you needed it as evaluation equipment afterwards, be a pretty inexpensive way to get your hands on one of those. So you just have to cover the cost of shipping. It's probably going to okay. run you about a hundred bucks. Okay. If you want to reach out to customer service about that, we can get you some more information. Okay, thanks. And yeah, there was a chapter, like I said, that's a few hours away that um, had one that was returned. And and the feedback I got from from Emmy and a couple other people within the state is that um, some of the clients they find that receive those find that they're not 
they're not using them as much as they thought they would because their wheelchair gotcha. is more efficient for even exercise for sure. and mobility. So I just wanted to see if, if others had a similar perspective and in ways I, I could guide this client since we won't have one for her to try out um, to be realistic I about say, the use of I, it. I would say that's accurate. Um, and I think it comes down to what is that rider's goal for the trike? Is it to look as similar to her peers as possible and have something that gives her physical exercise, but also um, is a different kind of seating system than her wheelchair mm -hmm. or, you know, whatever her goal is specifically with it. Um, I will say it's still further down the pipeline. We have a few of our other more common um, models that we're revamping, as you all know. Um, but we would love feedback about how they feel about our cycles and what things can be improved. Um, because later down the road, we do hope to change those up some too, to make them a little bit more successful for our riders. Yeah, it's right, great feedback you. though. Yeah, for sure. Great. Thanks so much for your help on that. Yeah, of course. Anybody have any other questions? Doesn't even have to be about Amtrak's, I guess. We got a couple of more minutes. We're still under an hour and you have Jessica here and Marissa and Adam and a lot of national officers. So we're, uh, I'm still working on our chapter up in Cleveland. We're very new. Um, I guess my question is, so I have, there are a couple things going on. We have a, a program through, I work up at the Cleveland Clinic. Um, so we, I've started a program there. I'm working on starting the chapter. I have access to a lot of therapists. I guess, how do you guys as a chapter get interest from more of the community, not so much? of the therapist. I think sometimes, I mean, therapists are great, but I think we as a group get burned out with all the different things going on um, and would love different ideas of how to get more community involvement. I think that's a very wise question from someone who considers himself green. I don't know if I would completely agree with that it's assessment. <laughs> um, I, I think your visibility efforts probably have to leave the therapy com community, which is challenging because therapists get it, they buy in, and that's kind of what you guys represent right now. Um, I don't know, you could probably consider checking out some um, opportunities for different business expo fairs. Um, you know, we've talked about that fund it, build it, give it model where you approach businesses to and this was uh, Marissa Lay's, uh, Melissa Lay's Melissa. question in um, the Owasso chapter, where you go into a business and you get them to help fund a trike and build it and give it away. And so you're starting to tap into audiences that are a little outside of that therapy community. Um, you could reach out to some local Kiwanis groups or Rotary or Lions to involve them in some of your giveaways. Not only would they potentially offer some additional funding, some of them might be willing to volunteer with and join your group. Um, those people are not opposed to volunteer activities. They're already doing it. And we recruit people from other, other service clubs all the time. We have a local volunteer center um, in the Greensboro High Point area. And so we pay a little bit of membership dues to belong to that, but we get different resources. Um, people can sign up to volunteer with our organization. Uh, so you just might want to look into some stuff like that. It's a little bit of money to pay for those membership dues, but it increases your exposure a little bit more too. Yeah, I think that's, we're kind of stuck right now where and Jessica, you know, I mean, we've done we've done the fundraiser. We're doing another one this year, but that's all going towards yeah. the program, not going towards the chapter. Um, so as far as funding, like, we're still very, 
very young in that aspect of like we don't I mean right now we don't have the funding yeah I would say another thing though is um like schools and recreational groups for your riders age groups um that might be those kids peers or family members of those those kids parents etc um you know we all know that it can take a lot as um, someone who's caring for someone with a disability, but the other people around them, their village might be really excited to kind of help and support that mission. So I think a lot of people get involved that way too. I think it's important, Nate, that you get some non-therapist in your chapter some way. And um, kind of what Marissa said, one way I see other chapters doing this is having fun events. I see a California groups doing it all the time. They'll have just a fun day where they invite their past participants to it, have games, things for them to do, set up an information table, get your parents there. And then those parents they're your captive audience. I mean, they've already bought into it. They they've already seen what the Amtrak does um, get their information, talk to them, try to recruit them to be part of your chapter. And then have a, the other thing is have an orientation meeting or a, a recruitment type thing and, you know, invite them to that. So I think the easiest thing is for you, you've given a lot of Amtrak's out already. I know over the last couple of years is get those parents, pull those. That's going to be your, probably your easiest members to recruit right now. Okay, thanks. You're welcome. I'm glad to see you guys going. I saw that you're having another uh, another Top Golf uh, fundraiser. It's coming up here in April, so. Looks like you've got a couple of suggestions in the chat to you, Nate. Okay, thanks. Yeah, the restaurant thing is an easy fundraiser. There's a lot of, Edmund does that. There's also a lot of restaurants that let you have a night there. Just set it up and advertise it. And if people come in and say, hey, we're here to support Ambux, the restaurant will give you, it's usually like 10 or 15% of whatever they made off of that person. Um, my chapter did that in the early days, even at like Freddy's. Um, which is a fast food place and every little hundred dollars here and there helps. And there's very little work. You just got to get the word out. Some of them will even let you be at the restaurant. Um, sometimes they won't let you talk to people inside the door, but you can outside or you just have to check with what the rules are and you can have them a flyer about your chapter and what Ambux is and say, Hey, please support us. Just tell them you're here to support Ambux. Doesn't cost them anything. And that might be a good way to get a little bit of money. Right. That's a good idea. Mm -hmm. there's a, yeah, read those chaps. There's several in there that are good ideas. Um, just on the restaurant fundraiser idea, there's an, a website an organization called Group Raise, G-R-O-U-P-R-A-I-S-E. And you can um, give them your organization information and they have a listing of restaurants in your area that participate in the fundraisers. So it's a really nice way to go and look um, for your area, the restaurants that have already um, done that type of fundraiser for other organizations. Thanks for sharing that. That's great. I didn't know that. Thanks, you, Renee. You're welcome. Yeah, thanks. It saves a lot of time from running around all yeah. different restaurants. And asking. It, it does. Yeah. 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 And once you get approved as an organization, then, you know, you're on their site and, and I've even had restaurants reach out to me and ask if I want to do one with them. That's cool. I think another like non-therapist way, Nate, is I know um, Dan Kite's on here and we obviously have a lot of um, members that are just in the biking community, but that's what they're passionate about and they're willing to help get people on bikes. So they're ready to support our mission that way. That's a good idea. Thanks. Anybody else have anything? I was just going to say that's probably a good chapter chat talk topic to rehash because recruitment's hard. It is hard. 
and when it gets really hard is when you're a member like me that's already twisted the arm of everybody that they know and you don't work your home life is your scrapbook room you know or your grandkids it makes it harder to recruit you know so you got to think outside the box so um Thank you, Renee. Renee's running out of battery. So and at least somebody has a burning question or needs. Thank you so much for getting on here, Marissa. Thank you so much for doing this. And um, like I said, it will be in the recording in the hub. Um, so if you have members that didn't get to attend or ask, asking you questions, you can refer them to that and they'll hear it straight from the powers that be. So um don't forget, we do these every month. Next month is going to be um, year end. What does your chapter need to do? And so hopefully I see more of you on here. If you ever have any questions, reach out to your regional directors or national or to the Am AMBUC Resource Center. I think we're good and good night. And hopefully I'll see all of you at your regional conferences because I will be at every one of them. So see you Thanks, soon. <laughs> Good night. Bye, everybody. Thanks, Marissa. Thank you.